So this is what I'm calling the slow route to fast e-commerce success. Because you know, there's a quote that I heard that says, we teach best what we most need to learn. <laughs> and this has been for me. You can ask my wife, you can ask any of my business partners. Me moving slow has been a struggle. But I'm gonna show you why this has been so important and why I think this is important for all of us to learn because I think it actually allows you to move faster. So we all know the story of the tortoise and the hare. For some reason, the tortoise and the hare, the hare's talking like I'm so much faster than you, let's race, the tortoise is like I've got a better strategy. So they race, hare falls asleep, tortoise wins the race. But there's three other parts to this. So what happens after that? The hare's like, this is so stupid. I'm so much faster. How did I lose this race? And he's like, next time I'm not falling asleep. Tells the tortoise, let's race again. The tortoise is like, you're an idiot. I'm going to win again. They get to the line. Hare does not fall asleep this time and just sprints and basically wins the race. Hands down, no problem. Tortoise is like, shit, what am I going to do now? And so the tortoise is like, I've got a better strategy. We're going to race again, but this time, I'm picking the route. And so this time, the hare sprints, because he's way faster, gets to a little bit of a problem. The tortoise put a river in the way, and so he can't cross. And so the tortoise finally gets up there and is like, see ya, and just kind of swims across the river, which by the way, if you're fact checking this, I know too many details about tortoise and hares preparing for this. It's actually a turtle that can swim, but just go with me, it's good enough. Uh, so the, Tortoise goes to the other side, wins the race. What's the motto here? Is that if you can have a better strategy than anybody else, you can win. And I think this longer term thinking approach that I'm about to cover is your better strategy. And I'm gonna show a lot of examples of how people have proven this out. And so my big promise here is that you're gonna learn how to move faster with less stress. Because you can always increase the speed in your business, but usually in proportion, your level of stress goes up also. And so my promise is move faster with less stress. How do I know this? I'm gonna run through a couple mistakes. One of the first products I ever sold was some different sort of natural weight loss supplements. So back in the day when I first started selling on Amazon in 2010, um, at the time, not long after, it seemed like every week Dr. Oz had a new miracle weight loss supplement on his show that would just blow up on Amazon. And I was in the right place at the right time and knew how to do that kind of marketing. So every time I would get some supply and I would start marketing these things. But first off, wasn't that great of a product to sell, didn't have a long runway. Second off, even with a product that wasn't that good, I was in an extra hurry. And so the manufacturer told me, hey, I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna, I have to order the labels from this person, it has to get to my facility, then I'm gonna be able to send that to Amazon. And it was like a whole extra couple week delay. I was like, forget it. I was like, just send me the labels. Um, I'll get the labels from somebody else, send me the bottles with the pills in there, just blank bottles. And I was literally sitting there, Callie and I actually sitting there in the kitchen, putting these labels on. They were all crooked. They didn't look good to begin with, but I was just in such a hurry to get these on Amazon. Then another person at the time who was in our very first version of teaching people e-commerce, he was in that course. I don't know if he's here now. I'm not going to call him out. Uh, but he was selling the same exact products, but he was like, you know what? He's like, I want to create a high quality brand. Maybe these products aren't great. He wasn't really biased. They're natural, they're not hurting anybody, but I don't know if they were actually doing any good either. And so he was like, I'm gonna create a high quality brand. And you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call up all the customers. I'm getting all these people who are buying. I wanna find out who are they? Why are they buying? How do I get to know them? And we're all like, you're crazy. Like, why do you need to do that? Just sell them more products, don't worry about that. That brand today, based on my estimations, I heard yesterday actually that he may have sold it, but my estimation is that brand does 20 million plus a year. My brand selling those same exact products, zero. Those Amazon accounts either got suspended or I shut those brands down because I wanted to move on to other things. There was better opportunities. And so I would have liked to have built a $20 million e-commerce business at the time, an extra one, I guess. Um, he did, I was trying to move faster, I actually ended up moving slower. Another example, which is another person in the room that I'm not gonna call out, uh, is I was talking with this guy, I knew he was doing really well, and so, we were on a trip to San Francisco, and I decided to have dinner with him that night. And I knew he was doing well. I was like, hey, how's business going? He's like, oh man, it's great. He's like, I'm doing like a million dollars a month. And that's a lot now. That was especially a lot back then for only on Amazon. So I was like, how are you doing this? And he was almost like guilty to tell me. He's like, ah, oh, mad. He's like, you know, I took ASM. He's like, I didn't quite do what you taught. He's like, 
I ordered, I wanted to sell, I think it was a vegetable spiralizer or something similar. He's like, I wanted to sell this, but all the ones on Amazon were garbage. And so I spent six months and like 50 grand or something, custom prototyping and all that. So that's why he didn't want to tell me, because I was trying to tell everyone to move super fast, especially back then. And he finally gets this product live and then just crushes everyone in the market. At the time, I had e-commerce brands that were only selling on Amazon. I would have liked to have built a million dollar Amazon brand, but I didn't. And so by him actually taking a little bit of a slower route, he ended up moving faster. Fortunately, some of these things started kicking in for me. And so this, you all have probably heard it if you've been following any of our videos. This is our company, Charles and I, uh, Life Boost Coffee. And so on the most recent Inc list, uh, we were number 29. Um, according to Inc, the fastest growing coffee company in America, according to their list. Part of this is because of that longer term thinking. Finally, some of these things started kicking in. So it's not just me beating myself up here all day. We've actually started implementing some of these. And so this is what I want to walk you through how to do, because I believe this is super important. So these are the five Ps of longer term thinking. And when I saw Aaron's presentation, he's got three Ps. So I've got two more Ps. And I think Mike only has three. So if Mike comes up tomorrow and he's got seven Ps, you know what's going on. Uh, but here are the five Ps of longer term thinking. First off, the product. I'm going to go through each one of these. So Yeti Coolers is a good example. So they came in, and these guys, based in Texas, did a lot of saltwater fishing. Um, popular thing down there, you're in water that's like six inches deep. They wanted to be able to stand on top of their coolers to basically sight the redfish, which I don't know how far I'm deep I'm going into this for everyone. <laughs> Everyone's like, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> Unless you're from Texas. Uh, but yeah, so they basically wanted coolers they could stand on that were that sturdy. So they built these super high quality coolers and crushed everyone. A lot of people have ripped them off. They didn't basically, basically, from what I can tell, they didn't necessarily have great design patents or something that kind of, because there's a lot of people that ripped them off, but they still built, I think, a billion dollar brand. They sold hundreds of millions of dollars, and I believe sold their brand for like $600 million by creating a higher quality product that solved a problem. Now, the extreme version is what Jeff Bezos says here. He says, advertising is the price you pay for having an unremarkable product or service. That's the extreme option, is a product so good, you don't even need to advertise it. This isn't necessarily what I advocate. I think advertising is fine, especially for a consumer product. His business, when you look at it, is a retail store, which retail just like Walmart, they can get away with having super low prices and like that's good enough, people will find them. That's not necessarily our position, but I think he still has a good point here. So when you look at your product, first thing is I would be looking at, is, is this a product that could sell well for at least five years? Like, am I selling something that's going to be dead in a year? Probably not worth your time. You're not going to have enough time to optimize it, to improve it. So first off, if you're looking for a new product, either for your first product or for a new brand, look for one that is going to be around for at least five years. Otherwise, maybe not worth your time. The second part, and this is super important, Aaron does this in his business, very successful. Uh, a lot of people, one time I was at a brunch, and I met a guy that was doing $2 million a month on Amazon, and I was like, what are you doing? I was like, how are you doing it? He's like, well, he's, I don't really do any branding. He's like, all I do is every single time I reorder, I improve something about the product. That was it. And his product didn't feature it on like the Today Show and stuff, and like he was doing no branding, no PR, no none of that. All he did was improve something about his product every time he reordered. So I think this is a good step. And so start with research. Whether you're creating a new product or existing product, what's out there, what do people like, what do people not like, improve something about the product, sell it, get feedback from your customers, and just keep improving that cycle all day long. Aaron, he was at our mastermind, so he does this all the time with his products. He's selling fairly generic products, but he's always improving something about them. And I think today, you almost have to do this to stay ahead. 